Now, the exposures of weak internal control or what are the risks of a weak internal control? So, we have here the um, destruction of an asset, theft of asset, corruption of information, and disruption of the information. So, the absence of weakness of an internal control is called an exposure. So, exposures which are, let's move, let's see here. So, exposures which are, as you can see in the figure, illustrated as holes in the control shield, increase the firm's risk to financial loss or injury from undesirable events. So, again, weaknesses, katokong giingan ganiha, um, the asset, uh, undesirable events include ac access, mga fraud, errors, mischief, so money mo mga desirable events. And then, your internal control is kanin siyang shield, ba? Now, if ang imuhang shield is na mga lungag-lungag, well, there are instances nga, ang katong mga undesirable events is mga pass through siya, and instead of protecting noon your asset, is ang mahitabo na is, nanay niya na yung makahitabo nga mga misappropriations, katong mga fraudulent activities, ba? So, Exposures are a risk to your internal control. So, with that, diba, we have this. The preventive, detective, corrective, internal control model. So, these are your, or this shows, or this model shows your levels of control. So, we have the preventive, which is the first line of defense ni mo, ang imuhang preventive controls. So, na mga katong undesirable events, katong mga fraud, diba, errors, mischiefs, access, ana. So, muagi pa sila sa preventive controls, diba? And then, if your preventive controls are insufficient, diba, your we, they will undergo the next level, which is detective control. So, isata sa prevent, balik sa sa preventive control. So, as I mentioned, preventive control is your first line of defense. So, they are passive techniques designed to reduce the frequency of occurrence of undesirable events. And then, preventive controls force compliance with prescribed or desired actions and thus screen out aberrant events. When designing internal control systems, an ounce of prevention is most certainly worth a pound of cure. So, mo niya ka common nga saying no. Prevention is better than cure. Preventing errors and fraud is far more cost-effective than detecting and correcting problems after they occur. Kaya kung ano yung nakamagsalig ra ka sa detection, di ba? nakakawat na good ang imuhang employee, di ba? So, nana kay nanay nawala sa imuha before ka naka-detect unless unless kung imo i heighten imuhang preventive controls, di ba? Dili maglisod jud og kawat si employee in the first place. So, mo nang mas better good kung strong ang imuhang preventive control. Now, your detective control is your as you can see in the figure, second line of defense. So, these are devices, techniques, and procedures designed to identify and expose undesirable events that elude the preventive controls. Or katong mga dili ma um, detect sa imuhang preventive or dili ma prevent sa imuhang preventive controls, ba? Or katong mga nakaagi naka sa imuhang preventive controls, kay maybe wala pa, wala pa kay mga preventive measures for those kinds of events. Mao nang nakapass through siya, ani? So, mauna, ang model nila is your detective controls. So, these detective controls reveal specific types of errors by comparing actual occurrences to pre-established standards. So, when detective control identifies a departure from standard, it sounds an alarm to attract attention to the problem. So, mauna siya imuhang detective control. And then, lastly, is your corrective control, meaning... Actions are taken to reverse the effects of errors detected in the previous step. 
So, there is an important distinction between detective control and corrective control. Remember, detective control identify anomalies and draw attention to them. While corrective control actually fix the problem. So, muna siyang difference ni detective or ugni corrective. So, for any detected error, there may be more than one feasible corrective action. But the course of action may not always be obvious. So, mo nang kailangan tanawon jud ni company kung what um, measures or controls would they do sa ilahang base, sa ilahang na kita na result or base sa ilahang na detected. Now, we have here the SAS 78 or the COSO which is Committee of Sponsoring Organizations of the Threadway Commission. So, kanisha. <clears throat> so, um, SAS 78 or the COSO framework or which we'll discuss later, the framework, um, describes the relationship between the firm's internal control structure, the auditor's assessment of the risk, and the planning of audit procedures. So, how do these three interrelate? The weaker the internal control structure, the higher the assessed level of risk. Now, the higher the level of risk, the more auditor procedures applied in the audit. Again, if ang imuhang internal control structure is weak, so negative na siya, going down, weak siya, meaning ang risk niya is higher. Ang ang kay weak good imong internal control. So, kato imuhang, kung imubalik kato sa figure, di ba imuhang internal control is weak siya, meaning buta na, daghan siya buslot or daghantog exposure, katog risk. So, meaning your risk is higher. Now, if daghan ka risk, mauna ni siya nga, ang imuhang audit procedures is mas daghan po. Kaya mas daghan man ka, kailangan i-counter ng mga exposures or katong mga risk. 